previous videos, we've discussed the important areas of usage and mechanics and rhetorical skills uh, on the compass writing section. In today's video, we're going to begin discussing specifically the idea of strategy in the rhetorical skills uh, category. Now, we also discussed at length the two guiding principles of the compass writing test. So we'll kind of just briefly review them here. As we said before in typical test strategy, we've thought about how the rules of usage and mechanics, and of course now rhetorical skills, how are they actually put to use on the test? How can we address those in an objective multiple choice format? And then of course the overriding question about context. How much will context play a part in solving the problem on the writing section? Of course we also need to consider the intention. What does the text intend to say? And that will connect a lot to context, as you will see today in, in this video. So again, we've talked about examples such as punctuation. Does the text need to be in the past or present? Uh, verb voice, such as active or passive. So again, we will once again extend a lot of these ideas to the concept of strategy today. Now, in our previous video, we began addressing the category of rhetorical skills. So rhetorical skills questions ask you to consider the author's tone, writing style, and their overall intention, whether the information is appropriate and relevant to the particular audience that's reading it. Are there certain ways that we can change or improve the information that we see by either adding or removing something? And of course thinking about the overall order, including the use of those cohesive devices, signal words, and other organizational ideas. So. How does strategy play a part in this particular uh, part of the test? Well, the strategy section on the compass can basically include one of the following subcategories. One is focusing on understanding the purpose. So again, this is talking about do, is the text appropriate for the particular audience. So even looking at our answer choices, thinking about who's reading this, um, are the answer choices themselves always appropriate? Of course, this also connects to the idea of relevant. So, for example, there may be information in an answer choice that seems interesting or perhaps even uh, connected in some ways to the information in the text, but maybe is not necessarily relevant to this particular question or this particular point. We also think about, in terms of writing, part of strategy is understanding how to organize ideas. Now, we're not focusing necessarily on organization today, but we are going to look at how information is connected. So thinking about the information, does it make sense? Does it follow one idea from another? These are focusing on transitions and these connections that we would consider to be uh, cohesive or thinking about logic, are they coherent? Once again, we're using the ACT Compass writing sample from their website. Again, you can find a link to this below the video on our YouTube channel. So looking at the passage again, sample passage number one, the Grameen Bank, we're focusing on question number 11. Once again, we look at the question and look at the answer choices, and the choices themselves begin to tell us what we need to do. Now, as you can see with these five choices, most of the answer choices are basically the same. So if you recall from our general test strategy, the idea is let's remove some of that information so that we can kind of more focus on the uh, parts of the questions that we really need to look at. So first off, we're going to talk a little bit about relevance. So relevance specifically is making sure that all of the supporting details and facts actually relate to the overall topic of the passage, and specifically to the topic of what we're reading in this particular part. Now, uh, since we notice right away the issue does not seem to be grammatical, that kind of re removes us from thinking about usage or mechanics. So in this case, we look at the answer choices, and we probably should start thinking about, since they appear to be very different, which ones do actually relate to the topic of the passage, and of course, which ones don't. So as we see here, it's really kind of a discussion of thinking, well, this particular information may not necessarily uh, be needed in the passage, but certainly we don't want it to hurt the information in the passage. So in other words, we need to look for information that really seems to connect to something. So first off, let's think about, well, if these are going to relate to the topic, well, what is the overall topic you know, of the entire passage and specifically of what we're reading in this part? Well, let's go back for a moment to the actual text. As we can see here, we do see some key words to think about. First off, let me use our pen here. 
we notice we're talking about a particular person. Now, that does not seem to be in question. So this part of the text, as we recall, since it's the same in all of the answer choices, we're not questioning the fact that the person's name, uh, Muhammad Yunus, founded this particular bank, or that Muhammad Yunus was an economist. So uh, that particular piece of information we know is true. And as we look a little bit further, again, we, we're not necessarily sure yet uh, whether some of this information is true or false, because we need to look at those other questions. But we do seem to notice words such as business, uh, assets. These are particular things that uh, do seem to connect. Uh, of course, the word loans, since we are talking about a bank. So a lot of this information, even if we just scan the next uh, few questions, we can see that it does seem to relate a lot to money. So maybe that might help us as we're looking at our answer choices. So if we had to think about the overall topic of the passage, it does seem to relate to the idea of money. So one way we can look at it is economics, which we do see already in, in answer choice uh, letter C. So in this case, let's keep it, because it says the fact that this particular person studied economics, that might seem to be at least relevant, or at least doesn't seem to hurt the information that we find in the rest of the, of the choices. So let's keep that one. But as we always try to do, we should try to eliminate information that doesn't seem relevant first. So just take a look at our answer choices. Which ones do not seem to relate to banking or economics? Well, for example, A, the fact that he was a soccer player, that might be interesting, but it doesn't necessarily relate to what we're doing here. D is also something that might be interesting, but has really no other connection to the rest of the passage. So in this case, I think we can eliminate those pretty easily. All right, so what next? Well, as we continue to look at the answer choices, we, we notice other words, too. For example, the University of Michigan might be a very good university, but notice it doesn't indicate anything in terms of its connection to economics or studying economics. And, of course, the fact that he just visited the particular place doesn't necessarily help us here. So I think we can also eliminate B. All right, so now we're down to just two choices. So looking at the two choices, which one seems to be more relevant? In other words, if I had to add the information to the passage, which one either seems to not hurt the information or even perhaps make it stronger? Well, again, the fact that he returned to Bangladesh seems to be a pretty interesting piece of information, and the fact that the bank, of course, is in Bangladesh does help. But it really seems that the fact that he studied economics, and not even just studying economics, but at a university that we would consider to be highly regarded, which means basically a respected institution, I think C in this case is probably the best choice out of all of the answer choices. Now notice what we did in this particular set of strategies. We actually had to go back to the context. And we also had to look at our answer choices to basically make a decision where the text doesn't explicitly or directly tell us what the answer needs to be. So in this case, the idea of strategy is really beginning to think about if I have to find information or add information, uh, is it necessary or does the information help improve the arguments that are being made? So oftentimes those are the answer, uh, answer choices you're looking for. So again, in relevance, this is uh, really reflecting what we need in good writing. We have to understand how information relates to the overall topic. And that's really what the compass is trying to, to see if you can recognize. Can you recognize it on different levels, on a word level, a sentence level, perhaps even the entire passage? So as you can see, this particular idea of strategy, thinking about how information fits, uh, or if I had to add this information, does it help? Well, this helps us connect to the next idea of cohesion and coherence. So let's move on and look at an example of that. Now this is moving quite a ways down in the uh, questions of the test. And in fact, this is where you often find a lot of the rhetorical skills questions or some of the last questions on the test. Because at this point, uh, you probably have seen all of the text. So in this case, you'll notice item 24 is asking about the first paragraph. So notice this particular question, you know, you could have asked this question much earlier, but you really could only answer it if you've read everything in the text. So that's one of the reasons why it's uh, basically item 24. It's getting a little bit later in the reading, and by this point you have read everything. 
or at least hopefully you have by answering a lot of the questions. So cohesion and coherence. Uh, first off, are they are they the same idea? Base are they different? Well, in this case, you'll see that they're slightly different, but they're very much connected. Now, generally, when we talk about cohesion, we talk about how things fit together. So we we usually think about cohesion in one of these few ways. First off, we think about it as uh, information that is being restated, or clarified, or perhaps even expanded on. So, for example, if I have a definition or explanation, generally we would, you know, usually see this information uh, after a particular idea is introduced. Now, of course, on a on a standardized test like the Compass, oftentimes this is done using synonyms or synonymous language, and then using appropriate signals or transition words to show how this information connects. So, for example, it might be thinking about uh, that if you have a, a definition, then the idea that would follow it would be basically the explanation, perhaps an example, or something expanding on it. Now coherence, on the other hand, uh, again very similar to the idea of cohesion, is basically just talking about well, are the ideas logical? So for example, if I have a conclusion, does this seem to be the logical conclusion for information we see before it? Now again, oftentimes this is related with signal words. So we think about how does the information connect? Is there a logical flow? Uh, does one idea really connect to another? Does this idea, is it the result of something or the cause? This, uh, again, very similar to the idea of cohesion, but coherence is thinking more about the idea of logic. Is it logical? So the key is to think about how they work together. So we thought about is the information appropriate? Is it relevant to the overall topic? But now we need to think about how it connects, and especially to the information before and after it. So again, you will see oftentimes how the test will use signal words, either to show us the correct connection or perhaps even to trick us. So we need to make sure to see, well, again, how does the information stick together? So let's go back to the question itself. Now the first thing you will notice is that this question contains an actual prompt, which means that there is an actual question being asked. This is different from most of the questions we've seen so far in this video series. So uh, that pretty much tells you already that this is not a question about grammar. It's mostly thinking about information as to uh, the actual idea of writing it, uh, adding information, and so on. So keep in mind that oftentimes we will see many of these rhetorical questions near the end of the test. So general test strategy at this point, we've got to reconsider it. Because with these types of questions, we have to process the actual prompt too. And our process of elimination is probably going to be a little bit different. So as we think about the subcategory of the skill in question, it can be identified by looking at the prompt. So that's kind of one nice thing here, is instead of trying to guess what the test is asking for, the question will tell us what we're actually supposed to do. And oftentimes this does happen with the strategy questions. Now remember, we've talked about understanding purpose, uh, relevance, which was the question we just looked at before, and of course the question we're looking at now. Oftentimes they will include uh, actual information in the prompts. So if you think about it, the overall idea of the strategy question is thinking about how that information fits together. All of it does relate to how this information fits and the different ways that things can fit together. Okay, so first off, let's try to find some key words in the prompt. And this will help us in determining what the question is actually asking us. Well, first off, if you notice, it's asking us to actually do something. Instead of uh, changing or eliminating, it's actually suggesting what would happen if we added more information. Now, as you can see, this does relate a little bit to the question we looked at before. We want to make sure that the information we are adding, at minimum, doesn't hurt the information we see around it. Well, in this case, the question is asking us if we had to add something, and specifically to the end of the first paragraph, which one would be the best way to make a particular point. So in this case, the answer we're looking for not only doesn't need to hurt it, it actually needs to help strengthen something or to improve a particular argument. So if you think about it, we're looking at how it fits with the rest of the text, 
but also indicating that it still needs to be relevant. And it has to be particularly relevant to the question. Now again, what's the question looking for? Well, we've talked about it's adding information, and that would best make the point, but the point about what? Well, that's what we can find in the last part of the prompt, and that's what's indicated now in blue. We have to make the point that there was a need for this bank. Now, one thing that can help us in terms of understanding the question, I like to call this translation. Now, it's not translating one language to another necessarily, but it is translating the language of the compass into information that perhaps is a little bit easier for us to understand. So what I've done is I've taken three, the three parts, uh, the three you know, most important parts of the prompt, and I've put those on the left side. So let's think about how we can translate this in the language of, of how the strategy question works. So, for example, if we add to the end of the first paragraph, what does that really mean? Well, again, it means that it must fit with that information. If it's a conclusion, it needs to be logical. It needs to be a logical conclusion based on the information before it. Remember, this is at the end of the first paragraph. Now, when the test says it would best make the point, what they're really trying to say here is that you're not trying to make a different point that the actual text is talking about, but basically you're just reinforcing or you know, indicating in a more clear way what is already stated. So again, that comes back to the idea of synonyms or synonymous information. You're not making a new point. That's the first thing we need to recognize, is that you're actually trying to indicate something that was already stated. So the key here is to think about that the bank itself somewhere was probably discussed as a necessary idea. So the question is to think about, well, what exactly, what need was it trying to satisfy? So that's why, in this case, we're probably going to need to look back a little bit more in the text to find the answer. So what I've done here is taken an actual paragraph from the text, and you can find it again in the ACT packet, and to start looking through the passage to see, well, what, where exactly does it start talking about a need? Where do we see that information being reinforced or restated? Remember, that's the key, is to think about that on the compass, uh, the idea is going to be synonymous. It's going to be restated using other words in basically the same way. Well, as I've highlighted here in red, let's talk about what need means. A need means we don't have something, but we need it. So, for example, if you notice the word lack, when we lack something, that generally means we need it. Now, of course, you could say, you know, hey, uh, I lack a brand new sports car. But let's be honest, most of us don't think of uh, transportation in that way. Most of us think of transportation first as a basic necessity. Then we can start thinking about the different levels of how we might define that necessity. So again, when we talk about need, that is a slightly different thing from talking about what I want. Obviously, if I say I need a car, uh, you know, really at this point we're talking about a car with, you know, four wheels, uh, maybe, uh, you know, one that is reliable. But let's be honest, we don't necessarily need a sports car. It would be nice to have, though. So, getting back to the idea of lack, lack kind of indicates that it's a necessity. So, in this case, if they were going to start a business, well, they would need credit. And that seems to be a problem here in this situation. So if you notice the word credit, and I didn't highlight it here, but you can see that credit is repeated a couple of times. That's another clear indication that this is probably important. So people needed this credit to get uh, resources and equipment, and they need this equipment to make their business productive. But notice part of the problem here is that people who needed this credit are usually denied access to it. Now, as we look at this particular paragraph, again, we understand, of course, that um, you know, we had corrected some of this information from previous questions. But we can generally understand, just by going back and looking at the paragraph, that really the need that's, that people needed here, or that the need that they, they, they had, was that they needed credit. Because oftentimes, if they don't have credit, you know, something could happen. Or in this case, if they didn't have credit, they couldn't start their business. So in this case, what we need to do is look at, our any, look at our answer choices and go ahead and eliminate those choices that don't really echo or restate the need that we saw in the paragraph. And then, of course, in addition, we have to think about that if we're going to add this to the end of the paragraph, most likely it's going to be some sort of uh, perhaps conclusion to the idea. 
So that would be probably the clearest indication of how it fits. It needs to somehow relate to the information before it. Well, first off, if we notice, uh, D and E do contain signal words. And again, this is one of the tricks that we might see on the test. They contain signal words such as, of course, and however. These particular words uh, oftentimes can lead to the next idea, perhaps even a conclusion, thinking about the word of course. But as we look at the answer choices a little more carefully, uh, do they actually talk about the fact that they were lacking something or needing something? Well, for example, the banks are able to lend their money in other countries. Well, that may be a, a good idea, but the problem is that doesn't help us here in Bangladesh. So the facts that the banks are able to do it in other countries don't really help with the need in this country. So in this case, we can eliminate E. And then if we look at D, uh, of course, it's nice to know that there are some startup businesses that don't need loans at all. Again, that's great, but it doesn't seem to really echo the majority of the text, which is talking about how most startup businesses don't have these loans and don't have the resources to get them. So if we notice here, D doesn't seem to really help either. So we're going to eliminate those. Now, if we continue to look at our answer choices, again, we do notice that B contains a signal word, the word however and however often indicates changes in direction. But if we look a little more carefully, we recognize that it seems to indicate a change in direction from the rest of the paragraph. Most of the paragraph was talking about the fact that people didn't have access to credit or that they lacked credit. So here, this would actually make the paragraph, it would actually kind of contradict or make the paragraph weaker by saying that some people didn't have this problem. So that does not seem to help because the idea is we have to show that there was a need for something. So in this case, we could eliminate B as well. Remember we discussed earlier that there was a lack of credit. So now we have two choices left. Now once again, the idea is, you know, sometimes the answer choices don't seem good to you. Maybe you could think of a better way to, to make this emphasis. But that's the problem of a multiple choice test. We have to choose from the information we're given. So if I look at both A and C, we might want to think, well, I wouldn't necessarily write these. Well, that, that's not our purpose here. We have to decide which one is better. Well, to make this decision, again, we want to think about which one emphasizes need. Well, let's go back to that cohesion coherence idea for just a moment. Remember that the answer we're looking for needs to connect logically to the ideas presented in, not only in the text, but to the question. So remember, a cohesive answer is either going to restate or at least reflect the situation included in the information before it. And a coherent answer is one that doesn't uh, contradict the information included in the text and perhaps even strengthens it. So the idea is it has to be logical. So remember, even though we might choose a better answer, like if we could write one ourselves, the idea here is we have to choose an answer that basically follows both of these points. Now, so as we said before, which one seems to reflect the need for the bank? That would be an answer that would somehow show that the situation was kind of negative, or that it will be negative without it. We also need an answer choice that doesn't conflict or contradict with the information that came before it. And of course, another consideration is to think, well, are there any other possible tricks that the test may, may throw at us? Well, for example, we do see a, a signal word here. The word therefore does seem like a conclusion word. Well, remember though, if it's going to be logical, is it making the right conclusion? Well, logically speaking, it's at the end of a paragraph. So perhaps a conclusion would need to uh, be supported by the information that comes before it, right? Well, as we said, the information that comes immediately before it is talking about the idea of credit. Now, I notice that in the answer choice, the word collateral is mentioned. And I also see it mentioned here. But we have to ask ourselves, is this, is this a logical conclusion for this paragraph? I mean, for example, let's look at C by itself. Collateral, therefore, is essential for a healthy economy. Well, that does seem to be true. 
but is it true for this particular argument? Remember, the idea is just because it seems a like a cohesive idea, that it makes sense uh, logically, does it connect to this question? Remember, that's always the idea we have to think about. Not only is it just a logical idea, but that it's logical in this situation. Well, one problem might arise from the idea of what collateral actually means. And it's possible that, you know, maybe you understand collateral if you've ever had to get a bank loan, but, you know, maybe you don't. So let's think about what does collateral even mean. Well, obviously we can't do this on the test, but let's take a look at it to make sure we understand what it does mean. Collateral, and this is from dictionary.com, is a noun meaning security pledged for the payment of a loan. So notice in this case, he gave the bank some stocks and bonds as collateral for the money he borrowed. Well, so again, C might generally be true, but it doesn't actually address why the bank was needed. You see, the thing is, banks are the ones that don't give collateral. They ask for it as security for the money they're going to give you. So while it's generally true that collateral is a good idea, it doesn't actually seem to improve the argument of the, S of the part of the essay before it. Remember, the problem is people needed collateral. So in this case, this actually seems to be kind of a positive statement that doesn't seem to reinforce or strengthen the idea that there was a need for it. In this case, only A seems to be the fact that it connects to what would happen next. In this case, a stagnant economy, and in this case, uh, stagnant means basically that it wasn't growing, seems to indicate or reinforce that what happened before it would lead to a negative conclusion. So notice even the word lead, which is a conclusion type word, uh, tells us that the conclusion of this problem was that the economy was not so great. In this case, A is our best answer. Again, it may not be the best answer you could think of, but because none of the other answer choices seem to reinforce the idea that there was a need, A is pretty much the best we have to choose from here. So the key to thinking about the strategy uh, idea, we have to be flexible. Flexible in applying the general test strategy and flexible in thinking about how much context we're going to need to answer the question. Now remember all the way at the beginning in our very first video, we discussed how that general test strategy needs to be flexible. We have to think about the type of question and then think about how that strategy can be applied. Now, some questions, if you recall, require very little context. The punctuation questions, for example, oftentimes we could look at the other answer choices and make a pretty good guess. But as you're beginning to realize, rhetorical skills questions definitely involve more context. In fact, sometimes we have to read the entire passage. So sometimes we have to think about that they're not only looking at just the immediate sentence, but sometimes the sentence is before it or after it, and as we said before, sometimes even more. Strategy in general involves how information fits together and how these words and ideas belong together. And as we said throughout this video, it's the way they appear, so choosing the right language and ideas, making sure they're in the right place, that they have logical connections to information before or after it, and that, of course, they relate to the other ideas. So the information we are adding doesn't weaken the idea. In fact, it might actually strengthen the idea. And sometimes the questions might actually ask you to do that. So as demonstrated in the video today, strategy addresses how information relates to each other in different ways. So again, in the understanding purpose idea, are the words and ideas chosen for this text appropriate for the people who are supposed to read it? So again, in this particular situation, the people reading this article would most likely be students studying economics or banking. So that's one thing we need to think about, choosing the right vocabulary and words. Now, we didn't exactly look a lot at, at that in this particular video, but we have seen in previous videos the idea of word choice. So again, think about is the language included here appropriate? So sometimes that might even be a question of whether it's too informal. Now, this is a topic we did discuss today. Are they relevant? Do the ideas and words relate to each other? 
is there information that is not necessary to the overall idea of the text? So again, in the relevance question, uh, sure, there were a lot of interesting ideas, but only one could actually relate to the text there and perhaps even improve on the idea or information. And finally, in talking about cohesion and coherence, we think about do the words and ideas, how do they connect? Uh, are words and ideas supposed to be a conclusion? Are they supposed to be examples? Uh, again, the question choice will tell us what we're looking for in many cases. So again, we have to think about that those ideas of are they clear, are they logical, and of course is the language going to be consistent. Once again, talking about more information about writing style, lots of resources available. We've discussed the Purdue uh, OWL Writing Lab website. And uh, once again, I would like to kind of get a plug in for uh, a very good book by Ann Hogue called The Essentials of English. In our next video, uh, as we're getting closer to the conclusion of this series, we're going to kind of look at the organization question. And we'll also continue to talk about that process of elimination, how important it is, and the general test strategy, how it applies to the different kinds of questions you're going to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for Part 7, Organization.